So Paul, this car isn't new to you, you've owned it for about 11 years but I'm interested in starting with uh, what you've got in the car at the moment. It's still got an SR20 in there, 950 wheel horsepower is an insane power output for any SR20. So can you tell us uh, what's been done to make that engine produce that power? Yeah, it's a forged bottom end, it's a 2.2 litre BC stroker uh, kit in there and uh, yeah, we've got a uh, Neo VVL head, uh, it's a P12 head, and they're able to, to rev hard and you know make good power. Let's talk about that head because that's one of the areas that we've seen are some really big power developments in the SR20 tuning world. Uh, the original SR20 DE and DET heads aren't known to produce massive amounts of power. When you take that later model head, it, it really just magnifies everything these SR20s can produce. So what's so good about that later head? Uh, basically the, the valve train uh, layout is, is a lot more uh, reliable, you're able to, to you know, it does away with the rocker issues that you have with the DET, um, much bigger ports and uh, two lobes on the camshaft which gives you the best, best of both worlds basically, low down drivability and top end power. So without trying to insult Nissan owners all around the world, this is essentially similar to the Honda VTEC mechanism? Don't say that dirty word. Uh, you no, know, absolutely. You're right, yeah. Okay, no, I'm going to guess that you are far from standard cams producing that sort of power. Are you still retaining that two-lobe mechanism or are you on a fixed high-lobe cam the whole time? No, because it's a street car and it does a lot of road kilometres, we've kept it uh, with a Kelford, uh, Kelford uh, basically a shelf cam. And yeah, it works really well. Now, with the SR20 block uh, producing that sort of power with a, a relatively weak cast alloy block is, is a challenge. Uh, have you done anything there to, to make it reliable? Yeah, we've got an aftermarket block in it and we also have some custom Carrillo rods and, uh, and thick wall CP pistons in there. Yeah. Now, 2.2 litre, you've increased the capacity there over the stock 2 litre. Uh, that's to help spool the turbo as well as producing additional power and torque? Correct. Uh, drivability brings the, it's, it has you know, a decent sized turbo on there so it does bring it, bring it up nicely. Yeah. Let's talk about that turbo, what, it, what are you actually running on it at the moment? So at the moment we've got a Precision 76-75 Sportsman Gen 2 turbo, it has a 1.12 uh, divided T4 rear on, the, on it. Yeah. And uh, what sort of boost are you running and where are you seeing full power, full boost I should say? Uh, so we've got full boost at 43 pounds at about 6,000 RPM. Uh, we spin the thing to about 9.5 to 10, so it's a, still a pretty good power band. Uh, it starts making good positive usable boost pressure at about 4,000. Yeah, that's, that's pretty reasonable when you can rev it uh, that hard. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson. You'll learn about performance engine building and EFI tuning, and you'll also have the chance to ask questions, which I'll be answering live. Remember, it's 100% free, so follow the link to claim your spot.